Hi guys, it's Ray with Ray's Turquoise Turtle. Today I am trying something completely new. So, you're just joining me. I am tracing around this elephant that I cut on paper on this silicone mat. So, I'm just going to finish this up. I'm almost done. I am going to attempt a freeform mold of an elephant. I have a customer who wants an elephant for a wall hanging and this is the only elephant mold I have. So I'm going to attempt to make my own larger mold. I have not done this. I know that people do this. Um, typically they don't do as detailed a shape. My understanding is they use like a rough geode shape. So I'm trying to get it to lay completely flat. It doesn't want to. Um, I don't know if I can tape it down a little bit to stretch it. I don't have I don't have any brand new silicone mats so I just washed this one really well. If, if this is something that works and I'm going to do a lot of, I will order some new mats for it. So I'm just going to tape it to this wood it's sitting on for the moment. Just to hold it in place while I work. Try not to distort my traced image too much while I do this. Just dropped my tape. Again, I have no idea how this is going to work. I know in theory it works. That's probably a little too close to that. I think that got that wrinkle out, so we'll see. Alright, so I have a little cup of soapy water. It's just Dawn dish soap and water. Hopefully I don't have too much soap in it. I really don't know. I have, and this is not opened yet, just your standard caulk gun. This one's just a Home Depot one. And I have a tube of silicone. It has to say 100% silicone. I went with clear. I have not opened this yet. I do want a fairly wide bead and I didn't want to have to build too much, but I'm thinking that to fill in here, I may need a thinner bead or I'll have to pour some out and like hand shape it. That's where the soapy water comes in. You get your fingers damp and you can smooth and shape. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut the tip off. Um, I think I'm going to cut it in here somewhere. Maybe, whoops. All right. So I'm going to leave that for an opening. And in here there is a foil that is sealed. You do need to pierce that. Most of these caulk guns will come with a piercer. If you have an older caulk gun that it's broken off on, find something else. Then you just swing that back under and out of the way. I have not used this caulk gun yet, so I don't know what the rate of flow will be, but push your end in until it's snug and then start. see if it's actually flowing yet. I thought I pierced it well enough, but perhaps not. Oops. 
Try this again. Okay. Now I have some flow. And I don't even know where to start. I guess I'll just start here and I'm going to try and go right along the line as best I can. I don't really need this to be a thick, thick pour. Um, so when I shape it, I'm going to try and just keep it somewhat consistent. And I will make sure it is very, very level when I pour it. So I don't have to go too, too thick. And I know it's a little rough right now, but I'm not terribly concerned about that. I'm most curious on cost, like how much of this tube is this going to take? Um, things like that. I'm still not satisfied with how this is laying. I might in the future tack it to a piece of wood so it stays super level. But this is another one of those tight areas. I'm going to get in there but I'm going to have to go back in and shape by hand. Um, if I was doing a deeper mold, say I was pouring a freeform tray, I would have to um, let this sit for like, say, five minutes. Let it sit for, say, five minutes and then build another layer on top until I got to the desired thickness. When you get into building trays and stuff, I'd imagine it would take quite a bit of this tube, but I don't imagine for a single layer it's going to take too, too much, but I'm just curious. And I don't think it'll take a ton, a ton, a ton of resin to fill. So I'm going to do the same on here as I did with the other legs. I chose an image that didn't have too many tight, tight interior pieces because, you know, doing a circle or something for your first project is one thing. Trying to do a super shape is another. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down a minute and I'm going to turn this around. Sorry about the jiggling. It's a ton of popsicle sticks under it because I had it leveled to work on for other projects, so ignore those, please. I'm going to go ahead and get in here. For whatever reason, silicone bonds to silicone, even though nothing else will stick to it, which is what makes doing a freeform like this possible. I believe... You can also use for something smaller, like a one-time use mold, a piece of acetate. And I may try that at some point for some coasters. But for now, this is what I'm doing. If I decide I'm going to do a ton of this, I'm going to get a electric caulk gun. Um, we use the Ryobi One Plus line, and they have a really nice one, so I would like to have that. Some people say silicone doesn't smell. I think it smells awful, personally. Well, 
like to the point that when I'm done with this, I may bring it outside to the garage and leave it out there overnight to dry. Because to me, this really does stink. So, I'm not sure how flexible this little bit that I dropped first was. So I'm just going to give it a little bit extra so I have it to work with. I do want to unload this gun just to see how much that took. So, these don't start all the way out to the end. But I only used a tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to hold them side by side. Just so you can see how little one layer takes. I'm just going to stick a popsicle stick in the bottom of each one. So, that's the difference for one layer, a little bit over an inch of the tube. And I'm gonna seal the end of that off when I'm complete to, to save it. So this is the part I'm a little not sure of. I believe I can just, I don't think I need to be wearing gloves, but you know what, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a vinyl glove on just because. Again, I didn't really watch any videos on this. I don't really know what I'm doing. It's just the way I roll. So, I'm going to put the glove on, snug it up some, and I may rip it. Yep. Um, I'm just going to start running my finger along the edge and smoothing it. I don't really want to remove any of it. But I don't want any odd shapes. If your finger starts to stick, get it damp again. And when it comes to these leg pieces, this is where I want to actually like mold a little bit and shape it. So, um, silicone will start to dry fairly quickly, but because you're pouring resin in it, you want to make sure it is fully, fully dried. So. I won't be pouring in this tonight. I will do it sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Now this is where I want to see if I can move some. I think had I squirted some in the water, it would be easier to move um, resin, or yeah. Silicone does weird things when you drop it in the water. You can almost, and I thought about doing the whole thing like that way, was pouring it in the water and kneading it to mold it, but not knowing how much I was actually going to need, I didn't want to waste a ton. So that's why I chose to do it this way, like drawing. And I don't really care what the outside looks like. I just don't want a lot of random silicone floating around the inside like this line I'm gonna pat down because it's um, if I fill it like that it'll have a void spot and when I go to fill this I will probably keep the silicone handy or keep a little blob handy just in case I have any spots that don't cling I'm 
again, I'm shaping into that nook of the legs. So I'm going to build that wall up a little bit higher because I eliminated some by stretching it. Now when I pour this, I will pour it either right on this piece of wood or on a cookie sheet of some sort. That way it's not in a box or anything and I'll be able to hopefully more easily remove the resin when I'm done. So I'm about 15, 16 minutes in here I would have to say, which isn't too bad. I don't think for creating a totally custom mold that will hopefully work now as long as you don't peel the silicone from the silicone this won't be as reusable as a commercial mold or even a handmade like two-part silicone mold but it should be possible to use it a couple of times as long as you have it fairly smooth which is why I'm going through this process um, and smoothing everything if it's smooth and you don't tear the silicone when you unmold it you should be able to reuse it couple of times. I'm not going to say you can use it 10-15 times, but if you're careful, like I said, you ought to get 3, 4, or 5. You just don't want any little sharp edges that will um, grow into the silicone or into the resin because that's where you'll end up ripping it when you try and unmold it. If your walls start to collapse on the outside, just kind of push them back up a little bit. And I do think I will move this to a separate piece of wood tomorrow that's junk that I can staple the silicone mat right to to really, really hold it in shape. That way I know it's going to stay completely flat and level. And I may reload the gun and beef up this edge a little bit. I do feel like I got a little thin there. But, overall, I am feeling pretty comfortable with this right now. I won't have to reshape it if I just go along the outside and beef things up. Like I said, it will be thin-ish. I'm thinking roughly a quarter of an inch thick of a pour at most. Maybe slightly less because I have to stay below the lowest point so it doesn't overflow its banks. Um, this I've got to shape in here also. So let me see if I can scoop a little bit of this excess off here again. That's already starting to harden up. So I'm gonna put that towards the outside and just push in. Because I do want the mouth to be defined. So when I come back in, I'm going to beef up the outside of that as well. But, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this. I'm actually pretty happy. I think it's going to work out pretty well. You have to be kind of quick. It's super, super hot in this room. So if I was doing a double layer, I'd actually already be able to run the next layer. I can tell by how this is um, starting to dry already. So I'm going to go back in, grab that caulk gun again. 
I'm not going to go back around the whole thing because this is all pretty thick. Um, it's mostly just the back here that needs a little beefing and maybe a little building. I may actually run a second layer right there and then shape it again quick. So, let me see if I can straighten this out a little bit more again. If I knew where I had a pack of thumbtacks, I would actually just tack it right to this. But, I don't know where they are right now. And I'm not worried about it drying like that. So, let me go ahead and see if I can find the silicone. Again, to reload it, just push it in tight. And you should be ready to go again. So up here I am going to want to push it up against that wall a bit. And I'm going to beef it up around this edge a bit. And honestly, the beefier it is, the better chance you have of it being truly reusable anyways. I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm acting like I've done this before. I'm going to turn it again. That'll leave you out of range. I got to keep turning. I'm just going to come all the way around the trunk. Like I said, an electric cock bun would be fantastic for this right now. Battery operated, I should say. It won't be electric. So, I'm kind of going to look around for any other thin spots that I might want to beef up. Okay, so that is that again. To unload it, you push this button on the end and pull your trigger, all the, your feeder all the way back and it'll pop right out. You don't have to leave that out to store it. You can push it down and then it's compact. So I'm just gonna go in and shape up some of that that I just added. I don't have gaps. And I would have to imagine that I could go in with even a silicone brush or something and run it along these. I'm just trying to make sure there's no hard bits. So I think when I go to pour tomorrow, if I start super level, this is probably going to end up being my lowest spot. So that will be my benchmark for how much resin I put in. And I will try to keep track of how much. Um, my I haven't measured this yet, but I do know that when I cut it on my mat, I cut it at the largest setting for that mat, which was 11 and a half inches this way. I think it was something like nine this way. So. I'm just trying to smooth out. I feel like this piece is a little chunky, but I don't think it's any great big deal. So, I think that that is it. I am just going to tap it all down a little bit to make sure it's bonded underneath. And I will let it sit until tomorrow. And I will do a fresh video tomorrow. I'm not going to add it to this one because it's going to be 
two different things really um i will come in tomorrow and if everything looks all right i will go ahead and pour in this and see what happens so thanks for watching that is my take my first take on a freeform mold if this works i will probably be doing more of it in the future because I think it's cool to be able to basically make anything you want. Um, to make these hangable when I'm done, I will either put some eye hooks in if it's thick enough from the front or the top and string a little piece of ribbon on it or something. That way it will be hangable as a wall hanging. So, thanks for watching. If you do me a favor and give me a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And if you ever want to see me make anything particular, uh, let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. Thanks. Bye.